I have been wanting to do this series of videos on the principles of design or aesthetic concepts for urban sketching. Uh, of course, one thing led to another and I didn't quite get around to start it, but I'm ready to start it now. So this is the overview uh, video to talk about the principles of urban sketching. Uh, or I call it the aesthetic concepts for urban sketching. So here we go. Well, you're sketching out there and you have learned about the ingredients of urban sketching. Uh, basically, that would be space, line, shape, value, color, texture, and so on and so forth. That would be the first half. We're gonna cover the second half now, basically the principles of design for Urban Sketcher. So what are these seven um, so-called principles of design or uh, aesthetic concepts for Urban Sketcher, if you like? Well, it's contrast, it's dominance, it's balance, alternation, gradation, unity, and movement. Uh, and each of these we will break down and in subsequent videos we will go slightly deeper in, into each of these and how you will use them in an urban sketching environment. Contrast is the easy one. It's about pitting uh, elements of design such as value. So you will pit uh, value 1 against value 5 and you will pit other sort of elements of design against each other usually in a very uh, contrasty uh, aspects of it. This is a, one of the most important concept of aesthetic that you can apply in your sketches. Dominance is about having one of the uh, ingredient of design uh, basically be the majority, be the leader, be the main theme if you like. Uh, of the sketch and it is always very important to have a dominant character in your story of urban sketching. Balance, it's not about creating equality but rather how you position the pieces of your ingredient of design and having a sense of um, balance at the end of it and it doesn't look lopsided but it looks aesthetically balanced and pleasing. The next one is alternation or rhythm. It's about placing uh, a, a different objects in repeat and in some kind of a order. Uh, so it could be A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B or A, B, C, A, B, A, B, C and so on and so forth. Gradation is the next one. It's about changing values from big to small or in this case as you can see the sky gradating from blue to uh, yellow or it could be a changing of size from big to small uh, it could be analog in discrete steps that are very small or it could be in sort of a batch step that could be a fairly big chunk uh, of gradating if you like the next uh, principle is movement uh, or direction movement is about the sense of where uh, this direction of the sketch is going it could be indicated by lines uh, either radiating or directional uh, it could also be the movement of the eye how you're looking at the sketch from one part to the next and so on sometimes it's about creating uh, points of interest and or focus point the last one is unity and i actually think this is the most important principle or the concept for aesthetics uh, when it comes to urban sketching if you have all the other concept down pat but you do not create unity uh, your urban sketch is going to look very, very uh, disparate and it's not going to put you know it's, it's not going to look harmonious it's going to look like as if you put a whole bunch of collage together and they don't talk to each other very well so let me talk through some of the details of these principles or aesthetic concepts the first one being contrast conflict competition. Uh, I'll be using a couple of my sketches to describe uh, this concept. Sketch number one, uh, the contrast is grey versus bright. So you can see the color red that is put on a contrast of grey background. You could also see I have hard edges as the highlight on the balloon dock. 
versus the soft edges of the background as well as some of the soft edges on the balloon itself. That also presents some kind of a contrast. In the same way, in order to create this contrast of porcelain, uh, well, I use the contrast of hard edges on the porcelain versus the soft edges of the shadow. The values of the highlight, which is paper white, against the very dark uh, shadow part of the bowl. So playing with contrast create interest uh, for the simple sketch that you see here. The next uh, concept is dominance or emphasis or simplifying. Uh, which is of course is the, com the opposite of dominance. Um, the idea here is that you shouldn't have equal measure of uh, the ingredients at play. So if you have colors as an ingredient, you should have a dominant color, maybe a minor color, and you may have bits and bo bobs of other colors. But you should always have a dominant uh, ingredient at play so that your audience is in no doubt what is the main theme? So for this example, uh, there are two dominant I could describe. One is the dominant of the orange color consisting of myriads of uh, oranges uh, from yellow to red. Uh, the other dominant uh, idea at play is this big shape of the elephant which takes more than two thirds of the sketch uh, page. And that is the dominant uh, idea here, both the color and the shape. This example is a simple one. The dominant theme is the color yellow. Uh, although you can see in the photograph it's green, but in order to make my purple uh, statue pops, I contrast it with the dominant yellow background. Uh, just a note about sim simplifying. So when you have an emphasis of a certain object or subject uh, or focus area, it is very important to make sure that you also de-emphasize the other part. So for example, the edges of the sketch, you might want to lose the details, abstract out, or just blur it out. And that is what I mean by simplifying. And again, it is about emphasis, but the opposite of emphasis outside of the, the focus area is to de-emphasize or simplify. The next concept is balance or equality or distribution. Uh, of the various uh, elements so that it looks uh, as a whole. It looks uh, in a way they work with each other as a team, uh, team as in T-E-A-M, and not disparate individual diva running around in riot amok. Uh, one of the most simplest concept of balancing any objects or subject that you do is try to do it in... Uh, odd numbers, in this case, three. Uh, two is much more difficult to balance than three. Uh, four is much more difficult to balance than five. In this example, I have uh, two bowl of desserts. Uh, one has three pieces and the other one has two. And one is smaller and one is bigger and nearer. Uh, and again, that is just to play the idea of balance. Uh, on its own, it could also balance, but sometimes you just need something similar, uh, but in different size and in slightly different shape, and that could just balance it off much better. The next concept is about alternation or repetition or rhythm. Uh, of course, it's not about blind copying and copy and paste the same object again and again, same size, same equidistance, and so on and so forth. But even as you see here, uh, the wind turbine, they are placed uh, in a different place, they get smaller and as they recede to the background, it is repeat but is repeat with interest, not repeat with boring design. So a simple example would be when I sketch this tart, uh, you can see that I repeat uh, the grapes uh, or the blueberry as the case may be, but they are not of the same size, of the same color and so on and so forth they are actually repeat with interest and again that is about creating this alternation but it creates interest uh, as well same thing with this sketch of the hindu temple when i simplify you could see the rhythm of the dark receded shapes um, in the structure uh, on top and then you could see how they are repeated but with different size 
and with different design which of course create interest. I kind of combine a couple of uh, general concept into one gradation size or proportion. So the idea is you're shifting in value, sometimes in gradual form like the sky, sometimes in lockstep uh, from one value to the next. And uh, you could be small shifts or it could be bigger shifts. Uh, so in other words, it's like analogous change or digital change where there are bigger steps change happening. So you could see in this example where there is a subtle shift uh, from gray, uh, well, purple to yellow and yellow to purple on the ground, as well as some of the smaller shapes uh, where I color them and I gradate the color like the red, uh, you know, at the back of uh, the lion, you can see that they are slowly shifting into transparent uh, paper color. And here in this example, where the fruit itself, you could see I gradate uh, all the highlight into its local color. Uh, and uh, that's an ex another example of uh, gradation, uh, if you like. So that left us with two more. This one is about movement, direction, or action. And you can see in this photograph where there is a movement uh, towards the horizon line. Uh, there's a certain direction with a slight bend at the end. And it, of course, it clearly spells action. And in this example, you could see, although it's a badly drawn example, uh, it's a postcard after all, you could see that the water reflection is, there's a certain movement to it when I allow the pigments to flow freely using gravity. And here, of course, it's a lot more deliberate. Uh, there is a very fast brush stroke at the back as well as front, where I can you can see the direction where the car is going. And that get, gives you a sense of where the car has come from and it's going as well. So a sense of movement, if you like. Finally, the one that I consider the most important of the concept is the concept of unity or harmony or creating the whole. This is about making sure that all your shapes, your lines, your colors, they all form a unified sense at the end that they are united and they are not sort of disparate, sort of putting together by force feeding them uh, in some way. In this example, I kind of put together all the different elements and when they didn't fit together at the end, I use a simple glazing method to glaze the entire sketch and make them whole or look united at the end. You could check out the video if you like to see how I did it uh, and to understand how unity is so important to make the sketch look like one. This example is tied together by the sheer fact that I'm using a pen line, a fountain pen ink and then wash. Uh, but the ink itself, the shapes and the way I draw the ketchups and the friends, if you like, uh, it's what unify the whole sketch together. They don't look disparate because uh, they are different shape, yes, but there is a certain signature of the shape uh, or the visual signature of the artist, if you like, that hang the whole thing together. And of course, when I sketched it, I put it all together and clumped them into one. Well, I kind of organized those into, uh, you know, a single photograph as well. So I took the photograph, but I also did a sketch and I organized the whole thing. So in some ways, uh, the shape, when you put it together and it is one single shape, it also unify the sketch as well. Sometimes in urban sketch, you can't really put them together physically, but you could put them artistically together. And that is a concept that you can consider to use uh, to unify your sketch. So there you have it, the seven concept for artistic expression, if you like, in urban sketching. Uh, I stole it from the principle of design, uh, and uh, but it doesn't matter because I think the concepts are important and I want to talk through that, right? Clearly it's contrast, dominance, balance, alternation, gradation, movement, and unity. I'll be going through each of these in a separate video with example. Hopefully I can illustrate that uh, in, in a much better way than I have today, but you get the picture. So with that, I wish you a creative journey. Enjoy the rest of uh, the videos to come and uh, stay safe. This is WeTake out.